With a loss tonight, the Capitals are out of the playoff picture. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and uh, welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holman. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows that when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why you need Indeed. You only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about this curious Capitals team. Uh, What do I mean when I say curious? The Capitals find a way to take down the Red Wings. Charlie Lindgren is huge. And then the Capitals fall tonight to a Sabres team that has already been eliminated from the playoffs. What is it about the Buffalo Sabres that is so difficult for the Capitals to overcome? I'll talk about that a little bit later. We will talk about how Spencer Carberry did what he could do about mixing up the lineups. Listen, he can't put on the skates and go out there and play hockey. He did what he could do on his end to jumble up the lines. We'll talk about that. And then a little bit later, we will talk about the Capitals playoff picture and how just one game can kind of mess everything up. But just to get it going here, uh, for some reason, going into this game, I was... Uh, I I had a good feeling about it. I was enthusiastic that I know the Capitals struggled the last time they played the Sabres. I thought that somehow, some way, they would find a way to take them down. And I guess the reason I thought they would be able to do it is just based on what they did in the previous game against the Red Wings, that I know uh, the game against the Red Wings wasn't the best hockey you'd ever seen played. And Charlie Lindgren ultimately saved the Capitals bacon in that one, that the Capitals would have bottled that up and let out the cork in Buffalo and found a way to take down the Sabres. Uh, It was a tough game to watch all things considered. And there were points uh, that I thought the Caps were going to be able to get back in it when Connor McMichael scored that goal. I'm like, hey, are you telling me there's a chance? There's a chance here. Uh, But the Buffalo Sabres had the answer in proving to a lot of different people uh, that, uh, you know, despite the fact that we are out of the playoffs, we are not above playing spoiler for some teams that are still wanting to get into the playoffs. I think they probably took quite a bit of pride uh, in knocking the Capitals down a peg. Listen, they're out of it anyway. Why not ruin someone else's day? Why not the Capitals? Well, thank you very much, Buffalo Sabres. You definitely did not uh, make my day, that is for sure. Uh, The Sabres strike again. Buffalo, a team that's already been eliminated, found a way to play spoiler. Uh, you can, and here's the biggest thing: you can have the best netminder in the world. That's not going to help you if you can't score goals. Uh, the Capitals scored two goals on the night, and I'm going to be honest here: this was not Charlie Lindgren's best hockey that he's ever played. Uh, but he cannot listen. He has saved the Capitals a lot this season. At some point, the Capitals, the offense, the defense, they need to save him sometimes. Um, that if he's under duress and, you know, if the Capitals aren't getting any offense, 
Uh, I think that that is an unfair expectation of Charlie Lindgren that he is he's going to save the Capitals each and every night. Uh, and talking about the very limited offensive production from the Capitals, Connor McMichael and Tom Wilson were the only Capitals to find the back of the net. Um, and it's something that is going to have to be studied and looked at uh, in the off season. Um, and, and again, I'll talk about this in the last segment. It's interesting when we talk about must win games, I think that, you know, some people that are maybe casual Capitals fans think to themselves, there's Dan going off the deep end again. Uh, you know, I mean, they're still in it. Uh, they're not out of it to be sure, but to losing the game tonight, considering that the Penguins won, that the Islanders won, it definitely is not putting the Capitals in a good position. And also uh, the Flyers winning tonight. So it has been uh, a tough thing for the Capitals. Uh, and just how do they pick themselves up from this? Uh, is it even really a possible thing? Uh, but taking a look at the game in particular, the Caps got off to a promising night as they were out shooting the Sabres 11 to five in the first period. That is what I was talking about, that enthusiasm that I felt about this game that, uh, you know, there is a really feeling, uh, a real feeling when you follow this team that uh, when they take down the Red Wings, when they take down the Canucks, when they take have taken down the Bruins, some of the better teams in the NHL, you start feeling like they can take on anyone and just to throw a curveball at the Capitals, they prove that, hey, we can also blow games that uh, you think that we're going to win as well. Uh, the Caps were maintaining pressure, and I thought things would be going in their favor, but then Zach Benson had other plans as he gets it behind Charlie Lindgren. Um, and he was one of the players uh, that uh, some had thought the Capitals would should have selected at the draft. But in any event, uh, Benson was the guy to make the Capitals pay uh, this evening. The ice tilted for the Sabres in the second with a goal from Alex Tuck. And it's interesting for me um, as a fan of the Capitals, of course, but a fan of the NHL in general, that uh, the Sabres are not in a better position than they're in. I mean, if you take a look at, they have a lot of really great weapons on this team. And I have no doubt in my mind that they will be one of the better teams in the NHL in years to come. It's, it's like a slow build, but once that things comes to fruition, I think the Sabres will be a team to be reckoned with. And, and to be clear here, I mean, they've really had the capitals number this year. I don't know what it is, uh, that makes them so difficult. On paper, uh, you take a look at it earlier in the season, it looked like the Canucks were quite a bit better than the Capitals. They found a way. The Red Wings quite a bit better found a way earlier in the season. Uh, the Jets, I could go on and on, but for whatever reason, the Sabres team that, uh, like I say, if you look in the standings, is not one of the better teams. Uh, they find a way to take it to the Capitals. The Capitals struggled to get shots on net in the second, and once the Sabres gained momentum, they didn't let go. Uh, they just kept driving the entire game. Charlie Lindgren, again, not one of his better games. Uh, it wasn't horrible, but not one of his better games. Stopped 14 of 17 shots. I thought Charlie could have stopped more shots, sent his way. Uh, in general, not a great showing by the Capitals. Um, so again, they are not out of it, but there is only just a few games left in the season. I want to say the last game is next Tuesday that, you know, a game, it, it can be a game changer and that it is really unfortunate uh, that the Capitals did not find a way to win this game. And I know that there's already people out there that are listening and watching this saying, I told you, Dan, this team sucks. And listen, I'm not going to fall into uh, the negativity uh, pit that a lot of Capitals fans want to find themselves in. They lost tonight. I get it, but they've won big games. And if you're a fan, you're going to be uh, with them through the highs and the uh, lows. Enjoy the highs, maybe be a little bit disappointed in the lows. But still, at the end of the day, cap the Capitals have far exceeded expectations of where many pegged them to be uh, this season. If they make it to the playoffs, they really exceeded expectations. But all things considered, just being in the conversation right now is steps forward. Now, listen, uh, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in length in the third segment. Even if they make uh, miss the playoffs, my assessment on this team this year is they should have done more. And that was evident uh, during the game tonight, um, a lot of young talent, 
um, that the Capitals have young talent, but is it the right talent? Uh, that is the question. And that re being reliant on a lot of the older players on this team, you know, Tom Wilson and, and Alex Ovechkin, they can't save the Capitals every night. And, you know, uh, John Carlson can't skate 60 minutes every night that it is going to be something that needs to be addressed uh, this off season. So the Capitals can hit the ground running in the fall, because as of the game went tonight, as far as the game tonight is concerned, not a great showing by the Capitals, of course, uh, which was evident in the box score. Uh, but again, uh, there is not a lot of games left, but all you can do is be prepared for the Lightning. That's the next one up on the docket on Saturday. I hope the Caps are ready. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we will talk about the line mix-ups uh, that uh, Spencer Carberry did to try to get the offensive jump started. How did he do it, and was it successful? I'll talk about it coming up. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find the life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Now, listen, I am the guy that uh, signed up for life insurance. Uh, why? Because I'm getting older. I have kids. I have a wife. Uh, you know, if something happened to me, I want my family to be prepared. That is why if you haven't done it already, check out Policy Genius and give you and your family a bit of peace of mind. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you through it. Talk to your team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step-by-step. -step. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Your work-life policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not even come if you leave your job. Policy Genius gives you the unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to re recommend one insurance over the other so you can trust their guidance. Check life insurance off your to-do list with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius dot com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So disappointment uh, is something that I'm going to say about this team. And I get comments all the time from people saying that, you know, you only want to say good things about the Capitals. Listen, I'm disappointed. I'm human. I have human feelings. Of course, I'm disappointed. Uh, I guess where I don't let it ruin my day is in the fact that there's nothing I can do to change it. There's something that Brian McClellan can do to change it. There's something that Spencer Carberry and the players can do about it. And Spencer Carberry did tonight one of the things that he could do, and that was to try and shake up the lineups. If you take a look at it, sometimes the best laid plans go to waste, as they say. Well, Spencer Carberry saw that things were not going according to the script. So what did he do? Max Pacioretty took over for Alex Ovechkin on the line with Connor McMichael and TJ Oshie. That seemed to help. There's one thing that I notice in particular is that Max Pacioretty's uh, experience is something that uh, is not easily quantifiable. Uh, he has not been the guy necessarily offensively, but he has a good hockey IQ and he can set up the players that play around him to succeed, as was evident with the chemistry between Max Pacioretty and Connor McMichael. That move seemed to help generate some offense. Pacioretty and McMichael, 
they are a good duo. I would like to see more of that. Again, we don't know what the future is for Max Patch ready on this team, but um, from what I saw in any event tonight and the kind of short snippet, we have not seen a lot of Max Patch ready this season. He joined the team late, but what I've seen, um, he hasn't necessarily lived up to the billing that I had hoped for. I thought that he would be scoring more goals than he has, but I think one of his things is not, like I say, not easily quantifiable is the the uh, knowledge that he imparts to the younger players, that he is a guy that's been there, done that, and at one point was one of the better players in the NHL. That is very valuable. Alex Ovechkin was back with Hendrick Slop here and Sonny Milano. Uh, Sonny Milano, when he is engaged, we know what kind of player he is, a dynamic player that has very exceptional hand-eye coordination that was not on display tonight. We needed Alex Ovechkin to come up big. He didn't do that. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about uh, in this show is you can't necessarily put uh, the onus of the capital success on only a handful of players and then also blame them when this team doesn't do well. Uh, I know that I've already heard quite a, th a few things about Charlie Lindgren, that he's not the guy that we thought. Listen, he is still one of the better uh, netminders in the National Hockey League, and uh, he's going to fail from time to time. And the Capitals didn't do him any favors how they played around him tonight, um, that it was a rough evening. Dylan Strom center Tom Wilson and Alexei Protis. Uh, Dylan Strom is the guy that I'm going to go ahead and say, if Dylan Strom was not on this team this season based on injury or whatever reason, I don't think the Capitals would be in the position that they're in right now. Far exceeding anyone's expectations. I knew he was good. I did not know he was going to be this good, a dynamic player for sure. Uh, Tom Wilson dropping the mitts towards the end of the game. I like that. Um, maybe that's just the, the male in me. I like when things don't go, <coughs> excuse me, poorly or they go poorly that there is some retribution. I know that it's kind of futile. And I think that, uh, you know, if you're not a, a fan of the NHL, maybe you don't understand, but uh, the fighting and Max Patch ready mixing it up as well. I like that. I think that they should have maybe done that earlier in the game. I think that that could have potentially been the spark plug uh, to get the Capitals going. Uh, maybe if they would have done that in a second. I, I think that Tom Wilson is trying to, you know, step back from his role as being that tough guy all the time. But I think that in certain situations, uh, him dropping the gloves and just really giving it to him, or Beck Malenstein, uh, he's another guy with a physical flair, uh, Max Patch ready, who we saw some players out there to just really rally the troops. Uh, this was a pretty flat-lined Capitals team. I didn't see a lot of jump. I didn't see a lot of pushback. Uh, this is a team that I talked about that their head kind of receded in their shell and just said, tell me when it's all over. Uh, that is not a winning brand of hockey. So um, it's going to be difficult. And just say, for example, the Capitals were to face the Buffalo Sabres in the first round. It's not going to happen. I get it. But I'm just saying, say they faced a team similar to the Buffalo Sabres in the first round. How would they fare? That's the question that you have to ask how this year's team is built. Uh, I think that they are built to make it to the first round for sure. Uh, they're built that way. Does that mean that that's necessarily how that's going to manifest itself? I didn't say that, but I think that they're built for at least the first round. Uh, but some of the teams that went all in, they pushed all their chips in. You take a look at all the big sexy names around the Vegas Golden Knights, and they are teetering a little bit right now. Uh, that, uh, the you know, if you take a look out West, things are not as buttoned up as we thought they were. So even sometimes the teams that really cash in their chips and they make these big ostentatious moves out there, sometimes those don't even make a difference. I'm not saying the Capitals did the right thing by doing nothing, uh, but just don't always think that uh, the teams that go out there and make the big moves, that's going to necessarily save the day. It can, but not always. Uh, the mixing and matching seemed to help, but it wasn't enough to stop the Sabres charge. It just wasn't enough. There was never a moment in this game where I thought that the, the ice was tilting back in the Capitals' favor. The first period, it seemed like the Capitals were doing well. They were out shooting them. And then all of a sudden, once they got going, that wheel started wobbling for the Capitals. The next thing you know, it fell off. It was too late. 
Um, so a, a tough game, all things considered. I wish they would have won. There's nothing we can do about it. Brush your shoulders off and get ready for the Lightning. I understand the implications. Trust me, Capitals fans. I understand that they could potentially be out of it. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that they are because mathematically, of course, they are not out of it. But uh, with the other teams playing well around them, this is not a great scenario for the Capitals. Uh, what we do hope for sure is that they find a way to turn it around against the Lightning. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we will talk about the Capitals currently being outside the playoff picture. What does that mean? And should we already start talking about the off season? I'll discuss coming up. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employees Employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. So if you are someone that's involved in HR or hiring or something of that nature, make your life a whole lot easier. Look at Indeed. I think that you will love it. Indeed knows that you're growing your own business. You have to make every dollar count. That's why you need Indeed. You only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. That's Indeed. Dot com slash locked on terms and conditions apply cost per application pricing not available for everyone you need to hire you need indeed eat stress-free this spring with factors delicious ready-to-eat meals Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef cre uh, created, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add ons every week, like breakfast on the go, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. Get chef prepared meals on the table two minutes with factors ready to eat meals so you can bring back doing the things you love this spring looking for gourmet meals try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon shrimp truffle butter broccolini and asparagus no fuss no mess meals factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping cooking or cleaning up simply heat and savor the good stuff tailored to your schedule customize your weekly meals with flexibility to get you as much or as little as you need and pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get your 50% off plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is still active. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Capitals did not do themselves any favors by losing the game tonight. Of course, we know that. Dan, that seems so simple, does it? Uh, but uh, Carlson wins it in OT for the Penguins. The Penguins. The Penguins. Yes, the Penguins that were down and out in nearly the bottom of the Metro not too long ago got an infusion, a Sidney Crosby infusion, um, an Evgeny Melkin infusion, a Latang infusion uh, that definitely got that team uh, going down the tracks. Uh, take a look at it. The Penguins take over the second wild card in the East by one point ahead of the Red Wings and the Capitals. Wah, wah, wah. For the Capitals, not the greatest outcome. With the loss and the Penguins win, Washington stayed at 85 points and are now out of the second wild card spot. 
with three games left on the regular season slate. Difficult, very, very difficult. The improbable happened uh, tonight as a lot of the teams that were vying for spots won games. Not ideal. The Flyers taking down the Rangers 4-1. to one. Who saw that coming? If you want to talk about improbable, the Flyers. Yes, that Flyers taking down the New York Rangers. Stunning, I got to say. The Red Wings continue to stumble as the Penguins defeat them in a high-scoring affair, 6-5. to five. Uh, And then the other one that really stings is the Islanders, which is another team that was kind of down and out, said, hey, not so fast. We have a really great coach in Patrick Waugh on this team. He knows what he's doing. The Islanders take down the Canadians 3-2. to two. Um, So it is kind of the making of the most, I was going to say perfect storm, but the most imperfect storm as the Capitals fall in a game that they really should have won. The Capitals have more talent, I think, uh, than the Sabres. And I, I, you could, you know, dispute that about, you know, they do have fast players. I'm saying in the, in the Capitals best, when they are playing their absolute best, they're better than the Sabres. I just think they didn't play their best hockey. And, and some people would say, well, Dan, they lost to the Sabres twice here recently. I get that. But also consider how they've uh, beat teams that are far better than them. That's what I'm saying, that when the Capitals are playing their absolute top-notch game, uh, I think that they were better than the Sabres. And if just taking a look at the standings, that would indicate it as well. Uh, just unfortunate. Again, I cannot say that enough that I was really, really, really uh, hoping for a win tonight. And like I talked about those scores tonight, it, it made it that much more difficult as the teams that were surrounding the Capitals are now getting pushed up a little bit and the Capitals got pushed down some that uh, make no mistake about it. The rest of the season, they got to win them all. I'm, I'm serious. They're going to have to win them all if they have hopes of making it to the playoffs, especially considering how the teams around them are playing. And I know that we've heard for the longest time, the Capitals have game in, games in hand, games in hand, games in hand, games in hand. Well, those games in hand don't mean anything if you lose them. So it's, you know, they're kind of squandering opportunities um, that uh, to, to, to make it any easier for themselves to make it into the playoffs. Again, don't walk away from this podcast thinking that Dan thinks the Capitals are out of it. I'm just saying that they made their work for him that much more difficult. Uh, they really have to do it. It's not hyperbole. The Capitals absolutely must win every game for the remainder of the season. Not going to be easy. Really isn't. They're going to have to dig deep and, and figure out how to get it done. Uh, Spencer Carberry is going to have to sketch st stuff up, and they're really just going to have to make a concerted effort to get it done. Or maybe they just don't want to make it to the playoffs. Maybe Alex Ovechkin had such a great time in Dubai uh, during the All-Star break that he's like, just get me out of here. Again, I'm, I'm kidding here. They've got to do it. I've seen them do it before. I think they can do it again. Let's hope they can get it done. All right, listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel, available on the free Amazon Fire TV channel app and on YouTube check it out. I think you guys will love it. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.